Hello! I wasn't going to make this video until I was watching Luke Stevens' live uh, Todd Howard video, where he's reacting to Todd Howard's history with video games. I feel like people are mixed up about their perception of RPGs. Like, they think only certain elements are what make an RPG. And... That's just not true. And I'm going to use Actman a little bit and such because Actman in his Diablo 4 and even his old cyberpunk video. Um, do I have a scar right here? What's going on right here? Like there's like a cut going through my eyebrow. <laughs> Hopefully if there... That's weird. Didn't notice that until looking into the camera. But um, I mean, now I look like a typical video game character with just the eyebrow. <laughs> because there's some video game characters, ironically, with that. Um, but, like, it's, using his videos on Diablo 4, Actman, and the stuff he says in those, as well as uh, some of the stuff he says in his old Cyberpunk, uh, Why is Cyberpunk so bad video. And I still think a lot of the stuff he said in there uh, age as well, where he talked about V is the only character you're role-playing as. You have to realize that role-playing isn't just in dialogue or side quest or something. There is more to role-playing. Take, for example, you want to be role-play as a cowboy because of perks and stats and skills. Um... You can be a cowboy as well as the weapons or the outfits the, the game gives you. You can roleplay as that. Roleplay is also in the gameplay. It isn't just strict to dialogue. A lot of GR JRPGs technically don't do a bigger amount of roleplaying uh, as what a Bethesda game even does when it comes to this stuff. I know that there's problems with the main story, and he is right about main story stuff, like when he talks about Fallout 3. Um... I don't agree with some points, because in Fallout 3, the father, your father in Fallout 3, eventually gets trapped in that virtual reality. So, I don't think you'd want to be a dog trapped in a virtual reality forever, unless they wrote it differently. Uh, as well as that's a scripted character. Um, where in Fallout 4, it would also be boring, because the kid that gets kidnapped is kind of stuck staying at the Institute, and I don't think you want a whole game revolving around you mostly being stuck playing in the Institute and eventually leading the Institute. I don't know if that would be quite as fun as what you actually do in the game. And um, you're just glad you have that freedom. That freedom plays into the role-playing elements. I don't agree that it is just a adventure sandbox open world. There is somewhat a... Um, role-playing to how you play your character, uh, how you create your stats and skills, your perks, whatever they may be, uh, how you play that character in the world, and if there are any dialogue situations that do give you choices or whatever, then that is just another level of role-playing. There are different levels to role-playing. It's kind of like the thing Actman said where he's like, where he couldn't believe people were saying that Diablo 4 is not a role-playing game. None of the Diablo games aren't. And he made the funny point of being like, gee, I wonder what role I should play in this game where you pick like Barbarian or Paladin or whatever. <laughs> it's like people forget that you can role-play based on weapons that you constrict yourself to using or armor, clothing, uh, skills, whatever, that can, those layers also contribute to how you play. But I think because a lot of people, either they don't have time or patience, or they play, it's kind of like if you go into a Dark Souls game and you only use one or two weapons or armor sets or whatever, and you kind of play the rest of the game like that, boringly, and you don't experiment enough. It's kind of like if you do, like, I feel like a lot of people do that kind of stuff when they're playing a game. And it feels like that's what's coming across with uh, how Luke Stevens is approaching some of the stuff he's saying. And I don't agree to an extent. He's right on some things, but it just feels like he's missing a giant chunk to uh, what he's trying to explain. And this is it. <laughs> this is what I think it is. And he's not putting, like, he's supposed to be a, uh, really, really good with his reviews and how he breaks stuff down. Yet, I feel like he's really missing that point to it. 
and coming at it from a point of view that, yes, people are sadly going to play it that way, but that's where you're, you come in and you're supposed to remind them, hey, the game provides you a lot of different ways to, to play and such and to create your own way to play. You are also a blockade to how you play. There are limitations to what the developers and such do, but then you are another layer on top of those limitations based on how you're going to approach and play the game. So you are just another limitation to that. It depends on what you do. But yeah, like there, there's different things you can do if you want to be a, an astronaut using lasers in, a, in one of these games. And feel free or be a space cowboy like even starfield ironically gives you plenty to role play with um and a lot of jrpgs you're kind of forced to play a certain scripted character or characters just like v once again in cyberpunk and there's a lot of problems with cyberpunk surprisingly enough that uh I feel like not only is this a contributing factor to why people probably like cyberpunk so much because the, it allows them to play it kind of brainless because <laughs> it is a brainless open world RPG or fake RPG. Uh, but there's a lot of elements that I've talked about in past videos that it has problems with. And there's even more elements I haven't even described, uh, such as V being being like mostly who you're only role playing as um and as well as like i haven't even described stuff like where the game mostly says the what of a situation rather than the why and that the first person perspective kind of harms it actually and you kind of wish you had another perspective and such the open world is very empty if you didn't have vehicles, you'd notice how boring it is and how bad the map is designed to traverse. If you didn't have the dotted lines, the fact that people will argue for the dialogue, yet it's a, it's still got the same problems as a Bethesda game, maybe not as much as Fallout 4 dialogue system, but it's still got the same problems where it color codes certain dialogue, like the blue dialogue doesn't progress stuff it's just an extra thing you can say or it'll have something like street kid or whatever next to it kind of like when people make fun of the flirt thing next to the um freaking dialogue in freaking bethesda games or whatever and then you have like little symbols next to it which i know games like dragon age and such have done in the latest mass mass effect at the time which was andromeda and um uh what, what else is there there's the yellow color coding in it which basically just says hey this actually progresses the story but because of how sucky the endings in the main game are as well as your choices really don't matter in the end you need a 30 technically a 30 dollar paywall or 80 dollars if you have don't even own the game you're still paying the majority of that towards the main game though and it's this empty ass open world where you have to antagonize most of the enemies. It still doesn't have some of the qualities of like the daytime night cycle NPCs. Uh, Asmund Gold had a video where he uh, he he basically had a clickbait title, and clickbait titles aren't a problem. But in this case, it was kind of silly, where he's like, "Oh, I'm, he's amazed by the NPCs," even though it's this thing where you cross a certain line within the game that activates that dialogue at that point in time. And it's not to say that Bethesda games don't have that either, but a lot of the time it comes across more naturally than, uh, and it's harder to predict than that of uh, what Cyberpunk is doing. And uh, I still have videos to make on that, but yeah, like that's an example of some of the things that I've never really cared for Cyberpunk and why I think uh, freaking Luke Stevens has a problem. It, it It's a shame, too, what happened to him recently where he got swatted. That was really stupid, um, whoever did that. Though I wouldn't mention, for some strange re reason he had to mention, is somebody hated on him for Starfield. I wouldn't have mentioned the game at all because you need to, you need to think to yourself, oh, wait, I have a large audience. What if people take that as advantage? to dunk on starfield even more <laughs> you need to be careful with you with what you say but i am on luke steven's side with that it's like that was such a stupid situation i hope the person who uh 
put him in that situation gets caught or whatever that was really stupid but yeah um and i didn't get to talk about it and by the way there's another thing i want to talk about that's silent hill ascension a tv show by the way that's on tubi <laughs> it's freaking boring it's terribly animated terribly acted or mediocrely acted or whatever the hell and um it's got microtransactions and even a battle pass the equivalent of a battle pass or whatever a season pass and it's like what the hell they finally went this far and monetized a tv show that's not even good did you know that the first silent hill movie is on there just watch that <laughs> that movie's actually good i like the first silent hill movie matter of fact most of the resident evil movies are on there too thank goodness the second silent hill movie isn't on there but Honestly, I'd rather watch that over what the, their show is because their show is really boring and drags where at least the Silent Hill Revelations movie is going somewhere and is all over the place. You can at least laugh and have dumb fun with it with some friends. So where this, it's like both you and your friends can't have dumb fun. It's like you're just bored out of your mind. So they made something somehow worse. <laughs> so thought I'd briefly mention that because frick Silent Hill Ascension and frick Konami. I'm scared for the future of the remakes of Silent Hill 2 and uh, Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater. So I don't, uh, uh, I hope they don't turn out bad. But yeah, I just want to debunk some things because I feel like people only think of one or two aspects of a game that are RPG. Oh, another thing I forgot to mention is that I want to talk about is uh and actman brought this up too in his video old cyberpunk video where are the f joinable factions in cyberpunk like they kind of give you a gang a faction and you know they exist in the game but you can't freely join them they mostly give you characters that have story quests whether side or main and that's just not enough it doesn't feel like there's much freedom there uh, besides taking stealth or guns blazing route, which honestly, with the terrible endings and just forgettable characters, in my opinion anyway, just doesn't feel like it matters. Um, you're just aiming towards goals, unless you have the DLC once again, that feel like you're going nowhere with what, what you're heading towards. At least I felt like I was going somewhere with those other games, as well as th they had more fun worlds to explore. <laughs> And cool things to find. And the game has tons of guns and stuff, yet it doesn't feel like a, the world and such complements it enough. Those other elements and such. Same with the enemies and the enemy variety and stuff. And um, there's just too many things to mention that I feel like Manly Reviews, Act Man, and uh, Beat 'em Ups have really went in depth. And some of their stuff still ages well today, even L3 to 1 has touched on some of this stuff and talked about the the modern cyberpunk still having problems as well and going more in depth and um while there are problems with starfield i don't think it's nearly to the extent that people made it out i feel like a lot of the hate originally at least until the fans of the game themselves kind of had problems with the game uh was mostly a lot of hate boners for from sony ponies and cyberpunk fans that joined in uh, not all of them, of course, but a good majority of them that make themselves stand out in a negative way. <laughs> and a lot of that could also be the abuse of the refund system of Steam and such, and being able to review it negatively or whatever real quick. So there's a lot of things that could factor in. I can't entirely prove all this unless somebody on the internet somewhere, whether YouTube or whatever, has. But uh, I don't know where I would point. But yeah, it, it was a lot of the stuff, including the Yang Yi stuff I talked about recently, has been freaking ridiculous. And drama just feels even more stupid than it ever has. And I just wanted to debunk some of the things that uh, Luke Stevens said. I love his channel and the stuff he touches on. I feel like there are things that are missing from what he's describing and talking about. And that uh, this is a way for hopefully, if he ever sees this, that he would um, approach it. And I know I have a sucky camera, I'm using my phone. It's the only thing I can record with at the time, uh, but I will be getting back on my console, getting the recording set back up on there and playing the games that I promised and stuff. And I wanna get to my read-alongs, I definitely do. So I'm sorry for delaying a lot of that stuff. 
This has been hectic lately, so I hope you can bear with me nonetheless. And uh, have an awesome day nonetheless. That's basically all I wanted to talk about. And uh, yeah, you stay awesome. Bye.